Turn your King James Bible to J uh, Judges chapter 5. We're going to sing, well, we're going to listen to the words of the song of Deborah. Verse 1, Then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinoam, on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel, when the people willingly offered themselves. Hear, O ye kings, give ear. O ye princes, I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to... I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. Lord, when thou wentest out of Seir. Uh, Seir, S-E-I-R, was the ancestral home of Esau, Edom. You know, Amalek. Yeah. Lord, when thou wentest out of Seir, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens dropped. The clouds also dropped water. The mountains melted from before the Lord, even at Sinai, from before the Lord God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were unoccupied and the travelers walked through byways. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. They choose new gods. They choose new gods. There was war in the gates. There was a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel. My heart is toward the governors of Israel. They offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. Speak ye that ride on white asses. Ye that sit in judgment and walk by the way. They that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak, and lead thy captivity captive, thou son, Abinanoam. Then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord hath made me have dominion over the mighty. And if you don't know it, dominion uh, is where they get the word dominate. Verse 14. Out of Ephraim there was a root of them against Amalek. After thee, Benjamin, among thy people, out of Mashur came down governors, and out of Zebulun, they that handle the pen of the rider. And the princes of Issachar were with Deborah, even Issachar and also Barak. He was sent on foot into the valley. For the divisions of Reuben, there were great thoughts of the heart. Why abodest thou among the sheepfolds? to hear the bleedings of the flocks. For the divisions of Reuben, there were great searchings of heart. Gilead abode beyond Jordan, and why did Dan remain in ships? Why did Dan remain in ships? I should point something out here. I've got a video on Dan. Actually, probably a couple. But um, Dan, there's a lot of rivers in Europe that have Dan in them. You ever heard of the Danube? The River Danube? The Blue Danube? Uh, I think his name was Strauss. Strauss was one of my favorite composers. Uh, you ever heard of the Vikings? Well, guess what? You ever heard of Denmark? Well, they don't spell it Dan Dan Denmark. We spell it D-E-N-M-A-R-K. They spell it D-A-N-M-A-R-K. Dan Mark. The Mark of Dan. Yeah. They were ocean-going people. They, they abode in ships. 
Dan. I think I think the Vikings were uh, related to Dan. I really do. But hey, what do I know? Gilead abode beyond Jordan, and why did Dan remain in ships? Asher continued on the seashore and abode in his beaches. 18. Zebulun and Naphtali were a people that jeoparded their lives unto the death in the high places of the field. The kings came and fought, then fought the kings of Canaan in Takach, Tanak, by the waters of Megiddo. They took no gain of money. They fought from heaven. The stores, the stars, the stars in their courses fought against Sisera. A uh, little note here. Sometimes stars is a reference to angels. The river of Kishon swept them away. That ancient river, the river Kishon. Oh, my soul, thou hast trodden down strength. Then were the horse hooves broken by the means of the prancings. Uh, a horse, when a horse prances, it's kind of like dancing. The prancings of their mighty ones. Prancing's not a walk and it's not a run. It's kind of, yeah. Kershi Meros said the angel of the Lord. Kershi bitterly the inhabitants thereof because they came not to the help of the Lord, to the help of the Lord against the mighty. Blessed among women shall Jael, the wife of Heber, the Kenite be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. He asked water, and she gave him milk. She brought forth, she brought forth butter in a lordly dish. She put her hand to the nail, and her right hand to the workman's hammer. And with the hammer she smote Sisera. She smote off his head when she had pierced and stricken through his temples. At her feet he bowed, he fell, he lay down. At her feet he bowed, he fell. Where he bowed there, he fell down dead. The mother of Sisera looked out at a window and cried through the lattice. Why is his chariot so late in coming? Why, no, I'm sorry. Why is his chariot so long in coming? Why tarry the wheels of his chariots? Her wise ladies answered her, yea, she returned answer to herself. Have they not sped? Have they not divided the prey? To every man a damsel or two? To Sisera a prey of divers colors, a prey of divers colors of needlework, of divers cuddles, colors of needlework on both sides, meet for the next of them that take the spoil. What are they talking about here? To every man a damsel or two. So, you know, when, when you go into battle and you've killed all the men, you go into the village and find a couple of fine-looking damsels, women, and, you know, one or two. You know, what, you know what a guy that's got two wives, you know what that's called? Double trouble. I'm not going to go there. But, um, and needlework. Well, hey, you find some nice clothing, nice bright you know nicely colored clothing there you go couple of couple of damsels uh you know a coat of needlework that's the spoil 31 so let all the enemies so let all thine enemies perish O lord what the lord has enemies but god loves everybody they tell us well they either don't know their Bible or they're liars. They're liars. So let all thine enemies perish, O Lord, but let them that love him be as the sun when he goeth forth in his might. And the land had rest 40 years. Hmm. Yeah. There's a special meaning to that word 40. That number, you know, Noah was uh, in the ark 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus fasted for 40 days. Yeah, 
Yeah, numbers pop up in the Bible uh, pretty often. So uh, there's a guy named Ivan Panin, P-A-N-I-N, and uh, uh, Bullinger, B-U-L-L-I-N-G-E-R. Uh, they both had number uh, books on numbers in the Bible. Ivan Panin was a mathematician, uh, a mathematician. And I don't know exactly the, how the story goes, but somehow he discovered the numbers in the Bible and started doing a study on it. And next thing you know, he became a believer. He's like, yeah, this is too, this is too intricate to have just been written by accident or by men. He's got an interesting book. If you're, you know, if you're interested in a student, you know, um, I've read portions of Pannon's book. I did read uh, Bullinger's book, but uh, Bullinger did a thing called the Companion Bible. It's got some good notes in it. Of course, nobody agrees with everybody, you know. So what can I tell you? But yeah, 40, there are certain numbers that pop up in the Bible a lot. 1, 3, 7, 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 24, and 40. Those numbers pop up a lot. So, something to think about. All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.